people are um, you know learning Revit and then when they come to use it they don't they cannot really adapt to it or use it mm -hmm. for their purpose so when you're changing from CAD to BIM I think mm -hmm. you also have a mindset shift so can you tell a little bit about like that conflict of how people were used to do it in the traditional workflows and when you changed to when you're pushing a company to the um, change for, for Revit or BIM monitoring tools did you have issues with um, that they want to still stick with the traditional workflows but use the new tool this kind of issues and how did you came uh, went across and how did you challenge those issues how did you solve them Yes, absolutely. I would say that the biggest challenge was uh, resistance to change. I'm sure that's a common story across many firms when people are trying to, not just with Revit, you're bringing any new technology, really. It's always a challenge. Uh, it depends on, on the people, but there will always be people who say, well, you know, we've been doing things this way for the last 10 years and if it, it has been working great, so why should we change? And, you know, it, First, I think you need some empathy. You have to put yourself in the shoes of some people. Let's say they've been super cat experts. They're really good at cat. They're used to it. So try not judge them and try to see where they're coming from and try to understand their, their resistance and un understand it and treat them with respect and then uh, teach them what they, with the benefits, what they could actually gain from going to, to BIM and uh, using concrete examples and always being patient and teaching them uh, one by one with any chance you get. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really about the, the human aspect, the psychology of BIM really, that is the most challenging part. Uh, you, that, that's hundred percent true because especially when you when you come to the, these people who, who are very good with CAD or traditional workflows, um, mm -hmm. one one of the things that I was doing always is that show them the best thing from their perspective that they will be like shocked how fast you can do it in yeah. Revit and mm -hmm. how easy it is. So rather than going the complicated parts or just a normal approach of training, we were like focusing how you can get, how can you influence those people and try to change slowly their minds and perspective so they can say, oh, okay, let me try this and let me try that and let me try that. And mm -hmm. I, I started liking it and let me try more. And then obviously they, at some point of time, uh, they start using it properly. So uh, what about the... The workflow though, uh, they have been like, when you switch to learning, yes, you're, mm -hmm. uh, you're teaching them and so forth. But what about, um, what about um, the mindset? How did you change, you know, like the workflow? Uh, because they have been using one workflow in the traditional work workflow. Mm -hmm. You know that you can, they're, they're not tend to change, uh, they share a lot of information, but in BIM, mm -hmm. you need to share a lot or input a lot of information. So how did you bridge that gap? Uh, I would say I went to an iterative way. Uh, what I mean by that is that instead of going with the crazy expert template when started, I would say I had basic template and slowly by slowly you push to be a little more automated to have more advanced um, workflows. But the way we started, uh, we kind of used AutoCAD techniques in Revit, which are, we don't use anymore, but to, to get started, uh, people were not too shocked when they were getting to Revit, especially some users. Because I mean, if like I thought, if everybody was at on my level at the firm, you know, we could have had you know, much more complex standards right on. But I didn't want to uh, lose my users early on, so I went to easy to understand, although it could be a little more automated. And slowly, years by years, we're fine uh, the processes. And a tip that I have is I. I thought about two or three times a year, uh, I would take a couple of hours of uh, teaching and teach them the, sometimes the new features of the new Revit, but also workflows, internal workflows. And I would also take the, the most uh, common frustration from the users. Uh, that often it's the detailing, for example, that's kind of a common frustration I, I hear from users. Uh, working with CAD is another one. Uh, and I would, teach a little seminar basically about how to solve this issue and tips to get across the, the frustrations. So I would say a yeah, key is constant communication and not judging the complaints from the users and then just say, telling them 
the reason you're failing at this, it's because you're bad and you don't learn. <laughs> so re really hearing their frustration and trying to uh, create a learning content based, based on that. If you like this video and more videos like this, subscribe to our channel because there will be many more. And don't forget to turn the notification bell on.